Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and uh, this is number 32 of my This and That series. I haven't done one in quite a while and have several things to show. But number one, let me start out with this package I received from Don Warner in Niles, Illinois. And he sent me several things here. These are high speed steel tools for the shaper in various shapes. Looks like they have never been used. Now I checked these on my road shaper and they're a little bit too large to fit in the tool holder and these are way too hard for me to cut down or grind down so I'll probably have to make a new tool holder but those are really nice and I haven't forgot about the shaper it's just that I got a lot on my plate and never have done much with it since I, uh, I bought it. Also in the box, you know, Don knows that I like to read and sent me a couple books Here's the South Bend uh, book on uh, how to run a metal shaper. Not real thick, but nice. Brand new. And that was put out after South Bend became part of Amstead. And then also a book on planing, shaping, and slotting, and that's a Lindsay publication. So that'll make some good reading this winter. I'd like to announce at this time my association with KBC Tools who are now sponsors of mine and uh, check out their website here if you would and this firm has been around a long time I used to order from them in the late 60's at the high school their catalog wasn't that thick then now it's 900 pages and you can send away for a free copy of that it's got all your metal working needs in there and uh, I already received something from them, and look at this. Is that exciting? That's almost as exciting as a Sterrett box, isn't it? And in there is a beautiful Noga articulated indicator holder. Extremely heavy, and it's got the adjustment here at the base rather than up here. So you'll be seeing that in my videos, and that, that's just a beauty. So... Thank you, KBC Tools. I appreciate it, Paula. I may have forgotten to thank Don for these tools. Thank you, Don Warner, very much. And uh, I was looking through this old Smeller here, gun book. That's from 1959. But look at those guns. Don't you wish you could still buy that Ruger Single 6 for $63? And I remember when my brother bought one. Notice they even added a quarter on there. Beautiful gun. And shortly after that, I bought the Ruger Bearcat and still have it. But $50 back then was really like four or 500 now. So it took me a long, long time to save up for that gun. And I still got it, and it's still in perfect condition. I think you saw in one of my other videos where I, I bought a few Brown and Sharp tools at an auction. And uh, I already did a repair on this, and that's shown in a different video. But, and then we talked about these boxes. I've beaten that to death, but, you know, somebody said it reminds him of, uh, th that these boxes remind him of Christmas wrap or children's pajamas. But in there is that, where's the top here? caliper dial caliper and I did a repair on that in another video so I won't talk about that but I don't think I showed the other two items yet not that I need any micrometers but there is the brown and sharp along with all the documentation little ruler and all of that and in a plastic box a one inch brown and sharp and these are the slant line my brother bought one of these when we were in college with the slant line, and I was so envious and covetous of it. So there's a one-incher. And in this box, these are used, of course, and have owners' names on them. But there's a two-inch slant line, and they have the carbide anvils. Spindle lock. The whole nine yards, satin chrome, 
nice looking tools. I do like brown and sharp almost as well as stir it. I doubt very much there's anybody that doesn't already know that I have a Creality 3D printer given to me by Banggood and it's been printing away here almost constantly for three weeks and I told you that I temporarily put away my buggy whip but for those of you who do not like the modern technology don't worry I am returning to my basics here presently but you will see more of this because it is a really a neat tool and and it's just that it's just another tool to add to my arsenal of of things and I'm not just going to print out plaques and, and, and other things like that but plan on doing some machine shop stuff and I've already done some patterns if you watch that video so check those other videos out if you're interested in 3d printers and I think maybe this is attracting some new viewers to my channel I certainly hope so so thanks for watching if you are and enjoy I've been having a lot of fun with it a lot to learn though I have made several videos on uh, some of the retrofits and repairs that I did to this Delta Variable Speed drill press, but uh, remember it had a, a ship's wheel on here to change the speeds, and I think I said uh, in the video that it sure would be nice to put a crank on there. Well, Mark Brozak out of the great state of Ohio sent me a brand new crank, and I retrofitted that. I install that but don't worry I saved the original part and there is a video coming up on uh, me doing that so watch for that but uh, this is pretty neat that uh, now I can change the spindle speeds with the crank rather than the little ship's wheel just tweaking some of the uh, uh, features of this really nice machine Delta drill press so watch for that video I think most of you know that I offer video courses on the South Bend lathe, the Atlas lathe, the Bridgeport, and I soon have one coming out on Logan lathe, but all of these videos are now available on Vimeo On Demand for rent. So go to Vimeo.com and do a search for Tubal Cane if you're interested. And the Logan series will be out in January of 2018. So thanks for checking that out. I received an extremely heavy package from Ron uh, Gillian, or I should say uh, Gilliland. It's hard to pronounce the name, but thank you, Ron, for this present. And he spent plenty on shipping, but inside here are aluminum ingots, aluminum bricks. Everyone has a serial number that he can trace back to the scrap that he used to produce it. So I kind of got a kick out of that, and he sure knows how to pack as well. And I know aluminum is a lightweight metal, but, and this is his name that I couldn't pronounce. Guileland, Gilland. And yet there's more down here in the bottom, I believe. Three more down at the bottom. And of course the usual shrinkage when you pour a big block like that, but you'll be seeing more of this, but <laughs> it will actually be in the form of projects out in my Fairweather foundry so <laughs> thank you for this there's what there's six bricks I wish it was gold this is a follow-up to something that I did uh, two years ago December 2015 and look at the top there at the white title Tubal Cane takes a southern road trip part one of three tractor pulling well in that video at about the three minute 55 seconds Mark. Dwight and I visited Country Classic Cars in uh, southern Illinois on the way to St. Louis. Well, we were on our way to Mississippi, but on the way to St. Louis and then uh, on to Branson a month or two ago, I stopped there again. There was a devastating fire that destroyed well over a hundred, maybe two hundred cars in uh, August of this year, 20. 17 so I just said I'm gonna drive on in there and see what's going on and it was just terrible to see some of the burnt out cars although most of them were cleaned up but they were built rebuilding I should say gung-ho when I was there and I was so delighted because I thought that fire would have destroyed this entire business because it was tragic and I think it was national news perhaps you saw it on television but 
Let me show you these uh, few clips of me driving through there on the way to Branson. If you don't want this, you can uh, fast forward. Oh, they're rebuilding. Looks like they're rebuilding it. That's where the devastating fire was. Here at Stoughton, Illinois, and this is where that terrible fire was several months ago that destroyed 150 cars. used cars. And there are the burnt out cars. Makes me sick, that beautiful 49 Packard. But they are rebuilding. As you can see, smile you're on camera you remember when I was here I'm so glad they're rebuilding I was worried about this and I was in that building if you watch the old footage what a mammoth building that is T-Bird, 58 Chevy, like my dad's. I like that Willie's Jeep. Well, many more hundreds of cars survived the fire. I'm sure glad of that. And they've moved the office over here temporarily, it looks like. And of course the name of this place is Country Classic Card. I think I failed to mention that. The sun is piercing and still only 10 in the morning. Make that, uh, yeah, 10 o'clock. It looks like a lot of cars have to be parked outside now during the rebuilding phase. Oh, there's a bird trapped in that old Volkswagen microbus. Look at those big Cadillac hacks. And an AMC Pacer. A car that people love to hate. So sad, what I'm going to show you now. 56 Chevy burnt out, 49 Packard, little sports car. There's a Model A coupe with a rumble seat. Yes, a lot of cars parked outside. I'm on my way to Branson, Missouri, and I'm so glad I stopped here to see this. Oh, I like that old Buick.
and that's Route 55 there, and we're not too far from St. Louis, perhaps 50 miles. Well, that Cadillac, that would have been no loss if it had burned. Or this big hack of a Lincoln. I like that Ford. If any of you are ever in this area, make sure you stop here at Stoughton. And these buildings are open. Oh, a wonderful Hudson. Love those old step down Hudsons. Okay, I've made the full loop. Hope you enjoyed this little tour as much as I did. Leave a comment if you like this. I'm standing at the Logan lathe and in a recent video you saw me make this uh, dovetail adapter for a taper attachment and it worked quite well. And I tell you, the paint was barely dry on this, and I got an email from one Mr. John Croft. And he said, well, I have one of the original equipment ones, if you want it. So I said, send it over, and he sure did, and I thank you very much, John. So, so there it is, and I, the rest of the attachment is not mounted on the lathe at the moment, but that's just a perfect fit for my old lathe. And then there was yet another man in Nebraska that said he had one, too. So... John didn't even know what this was until I did the video and then he, he saw what he had there in his, well, on, in storage from an auction. He said, well, my gosh, that, that looks like it fits the Logan and it sure does. So thanks, John. And now I'm in business and can turn tapers by the taper attach method on my Logan lathe. Well, that concludes this chapter. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and watch uh, other videos, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.